make this thing just pop. Everybody's gonna be so mad at us. Dude, it's good. It is so good. Oh, oh, oh. she's tough. Dude. Oh my god. We've got a special one here for you guys today. This one may be a little easier than our last couple, which is somewhat good news and somewhat bad. Oh my gosh. As you see behind me, we have something that looks real nice. It is a 1953 Ford Custom Line. Story behind the old girl. You know, again, on Facebook Marketplace, and uh, the ad basically said, hey, um, selling this for my grandmother. My grandfather just passed away, and this is one of his pride and joy vehicles. Um, well, you know, you look around, and you had a lot of pride and joy vehicles, but this was one that was basically recently on the road, and before he got sick, about three years ago, um, he used to drive this very frequently, and, uh, it was one of his beauties. I said, hey, what does it need? Blah, 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 blah. It sounds like it'll be a really easy wilt run, but it hasn't rained in those three years. So we're gonna do a roll quick once over, check it all over, and then we have big plans for this car. We wanna make this thing cool. So let's just walk around and let's see what she's all got to her. I've stopped here once before and kind of took a look at it really quick just to make sure it was something Alex and I want. We're not far from home. This isn't gonna be a hard uh, wilt run drive home. But uh, this, this ain't gonna be, be an engine swap. This ain't gonna be no <laughs> engine swap, but this will be a really interesting video for you guys to kind of, we got some budget build details. That's kind of our plan here. We didn't pay a lot for this vehicle for what it is. And I feel like we got a really good deal. So it gives us a good opportunity um, to throw some items at it that I purchased and that'll make this thing just pop. And it'd be a really sweet, say, I don't know, what do you want to say? Like a car show car. Yeah. Not in the car shows, but it'll really be a really sweet car show car. She's had a repaint. She's a very ugly, I don't know, what do you want to call it, copper? Bronze, yeah, copper kind of so thing. It's a yeah. really ugly copper. Um, body is is meh, to say, say the least. It's, it's We've got a lot of bubbling on the roof. Um, we, we'll do something to take care of it. Spray paint. The fenders have a little bit of rot in them. I would call this the perfect daily driven vehicle. This is, to me, is perfect. It's not too showy, not too, uh, not too crappy just it's just all in all really sweet rig so this is a two-door which is really the only things i like to buy because i don't like four doors um hate me if you want but i don't like four doors like the two doors this is the two-door sedan so it has the big back window not the cute little uh, business coupe look you get what you get nowadays is the sad part is business coupes are just oh so expensive one thing i really liked about this generation of vehicle is just how flowy it is like this I'd call this the fender extraction. It's super flowy with the vehicle, as well as you come around to the back. It's got the little, little bullets in the back. So it's a super, super cool vehicle for the era. The guy told me he had the receipts and did show me. She's got a new fuel tank. She's got a new exhaust system. And I didn't see any receipts for this, but I would fathom to guess the best part about this vehicle that one oh, right there look at that that is a beautiful old flathead v8 from what i know ford started producing the the v8 or flathead v8 in the early 1930s um i'm not the guy to give history lessons as you guys know but 1930s and then this is the last year of the flathead v8 i was really hoping it was the next generation like the y block but I was slapped to my senses really quick when people, you know, you talk about the Y block and it doesn't have the best rep, but yeah, this flathead I think has been messed with in uh, recent years because it's, the heads are all painted up nice. No, they're not like Edelbrock speedy heads, but the engine bay itself, clean, very clean, very clean. And that's the best part about it. Should we just get into it or do we want to look inside? Let's look inside. So uh, something really fun, uh, really cool I think about this car. Is this like? What kind of carpet is this, actually? That's vinyl. Oh, okay. That's like rubber. I didn't even check the. I didn't even check the floor pans. Oh, geez. Not bad. Oh, there. Yeah, Don't grab the screwdriver. We, st we still got some left. She got insulation in her. Oh, we got the air hole still. Oh man, this is sweet. But this is really nice. And I think it's some hillbilly hog ringed it. <laughs> 
so <laughs> we won't do anything with those. But we also have some stuff to touch up inside, which is going to be sweet for you guys to see. Um, but yeah, these seats aren't bad. Look at that. Came with a book. Again, we can read while we're broke down the side of the road. It's not so, twilight this time. She's a little three-speed on the column. Do you know how to drive that, Alex? I don't, actually. I bet I could figure it out and roast something. But... The good news is, is I can drive it. So, not well, but I can drive it. So, I'll drive the truck. It's That's not fine. That hard. <laughs> but on this vehicle, we didn't bring many new parts because I don't think it's going to be too big of an issue. So, we're just going to do some fiddling on her, make it happen. Oh, let's see if I can find some keys in this. They said they were going to leave them in the visor. Look hey. Didn't get lied to you this time. This thick car did come with a clean title. What about that? And the keys. This might be our nicest one yet. Oh, look at that. Full size spare with a nice tire. Oh, wow. And it's not rotted in the bottom, too. Do you think that's the original bumper jack, too? Yeah, I think it is. Really? Oh, and there's the classic smell of every old new car, old car, mothballs. Look at that literature. Oh, nice. Huh. So she was kind of a gold in her day. So mate, here's no way this is the original color. And we got red here, too. We just got all kinds of stuff happening. Make for some cool patina. Wink, wink. Trunk is good. I think that's good. Look at that floor. So I think she needs a little air in a couple tires, which we have taken care of too. But I think we're gonna try to just, the way it sits, I think we're gonna try to drive it to the shop and then we'll get to the actual episode. Let's just go and go get a jump starter on that battery. Cause they said that they were trying to get it to run earlier and they couldn't get it to run. So we're just gonna check the oil and see if we've got spark and we'll just let her rip. We have our jump pack that is a uh, six volt or 12 volt working system. Somehow it's more intelligent than us. This battery's been plugged in probably quite some time. We're hopefully not gonna burn up the system and this gets stupid in 12 volt. So this whole thing is six volt. It won't really matter if I'm being honest with you guys because we have plans for this anyway and it's already been purchased is what I'll say. I'm gonna pop the top off that distributor. I'm gonna have Alex jump on inside and give her some turning over. That's a weird place to put a key, like here? Yeah, dude. All the way on the left side. Welcome to the old vehicles. So another way to tell that someone you actually cared for this thing, she's still got oil in the oil bath. This is the first vehicle that is damn near original that I've seen that is this well taken care of. I'm gonna take this off just for now. Go ahead and turn her over. Make sure you put the clutch in so I don't die. Whoa. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh! Go ahead again. Go ahead. Oh yeah, she's a sparker. Very slow. She's a, so since it's six volt, this thing is slower than molasses. And that is why we're gonna do one of our upgrades because neither you nor I have enough life left to wait on this thing to turn over. So. <laughs> let's, uh, let's spray some goods down the old uh, carburetor, get this distributor cap back on. Looks like these plugs are even pretty decent. Decently new, so I'm not going to worry about checking those. Um, one thing I'd really like to do is change these battery monstrous lugs out. That could be another reason why we're losing voltages because these are just so thick. I know that sounds stupid, but I think when stuff is that thick, I think, well, that's another issue. Woo! We got to get some new battery cables on her, that's for sure. And somebody somebody already knew Daniel Grab Meth Reps was coming. Look at that. Let's start sanding that right away. Yeah, I'll sand it with my fingers. My Tacoma has that. Every Toyota has that. <laughs> oh man. How old so are these? these are actually back in the day when we did the, the power wagon video. I was actually right on the date. I just want to point that out. Yeah, those were from like what, like 09? We were like 10 years old or something around there. Yeah. So these are actually a 2018 tire. Oh damn. So that would have been a little bit before that three year parking time. Dude, these are I this is crazy. We got a damn good deal. So what's this? So that is actually where the oil filter is at, uh, oh. which we probably should check. We're not going to. The oil, what is this random wire? What the heck? Oh my gosh, dude. She's a little dark, and she's got a little gas in her. So that, we're going to add that to the list. I think we'll be just fine. You know, what I was reading is obviously most people are going to put SAE 30 in it, and that is like as thick, pretty common in oil as you can get in the old days 
so I'm not really worried about this losing its like you know viscosity on keeping the motor lubricated so we'll drive it that 50 miles and then we'll change whatever we gotta change I think I got one of those on order so that's perfect I even ordered a fuel pump we're not gonna need that obviously we already had a little Oh, so that's nice. Yeah, she's doing a lot better than the Javelin, for oh sure. Oh my gosh, this is, this is a night and day difference. I think this, like I said, this car's had, like even looking down, you look down here and there's like brand new brake lines already right there. This is just... Well, yeah, it's been messed with three years ago, so yeah. other than 20. <laughs> this is, uh, this is going to be... We're gonna having be an easy time. time, but the budget thing is going to be the, the most of this video. So Obviously, watch this video, but if you guys uh, have any recommendations on how to hop up a flathead V8, let us know, because I think this would be a really cool thing on the channel for us to do some flathead work, and maybe tell me something I don't know. As much as, much as I think I know, I, I might not. I think she has a little bit less than 200 horse. Can we get 250 horse out of this kind of thing? Just tell me down in the comments. I'd like to know. And, you old boys, let me know and teach me something. Go ahead. Oh my gosh, dude, what the heck? Go ahead. Oh, just. Oh. Uh. Oh my gosh. No way. So, yeah, I mean, I what, what can you say? The guy said that it did run two, three years ago. So, I think uh, I think this one's, this already shows you. Look at that flathead. That thing runs better than the Javelin. Hey, all right, let's get some, let's get the gas tank from the pickup, fill it up, because we're just gonna pray that whatever's left in the tank is still good. Oh, that shit. So, Alex, this is a good a chance for Alex to know this is an oil bath. So you use oil baths to separate from the filter. So everyone knows, I was a regular child. I didn't have to smell cotton balls or whatever all day. <laughs> Basically, let's just get this straight right now. Alex did not work on old cars until he met Sean. Which was back in 18. Yeah, and I don't even really know what I'm doing ever because <laughs> I just I just wing it. I don't it. even know what brake rotors are. I don't even know what rotors are. What is this guy? This must have four wheel discs. People get my goat. I'll tell you what, everybody's just a freaking expert. I'll I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. So after our last video, we went out and bought one of these guys. I call it like an ATV slash motorcycle fill jug back in the day, but I'll tell you what, this thing is 99% better than those stupid red jugs. So 20 bucks, hit the, your local Menards, shout out to the Midwest and get yourself one of these suckers because it makes life much easier. That's so much easier. Look how fast that goes. Don't you wish we would have bought one of these years ago? Oh yeah, plenty of years ago. The only thing would make it better if we had another panel right here. I guess we got to make some, right? And start inventing and selling. Maybe we should actually make people buy useful stuff rather than t-shirts and stuff and key tags. That'd be cool. Maybe we should invent actual items. Do you guys want to see gas tank, daily driven bed trap merch? Let us know what we can brand that you guys would rather buy than stupid apparel. Just a bunch of different car silhouette nuggets. That'd be, That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> she gone. There's two and a half gallons just like that. So we'll pray, because we only brought half a tank, that there's a little bit of varnish left in the tank that will clog up the carburetor. And uh, also pray that we make it 20 miles into town. It sounds good. Even back here, like check out the exhaust. It sounds pretty good. Is that? She's got one little misfire. Do, um, do we have lights? Oh, we do. No way. To the back work? No way, dude. Oh, yes, sir. Um, is it out of gear? So. How do you tell? It's like so there's uh so pull towards you and up is reverse pull towards you and down is first away from you second and then third so it's out okay. right now let go and push the brake light oh my gosh take the camera do it again oh jesus she's running a 
bitch. Oh yeah, go do it again. Oh my gosh, dude. Soak up the views real quick, boys and girls. I would say this to me, you know, right now it's just kind of a meh. You know, you see, uh, this exactly what it is. You'd see your grandfather driving this around, um, do a car show, you know, all original almost. Just kind of meh. Look at that. Gosh, dude. Whereas now, this thing is gonna be so cool. Very excited. I can't believe the headlights work. Just wild to me. Also, it is charging. That is why the, obviously it's still running. We have the jump pack off. So generator works. Again, it don't, it won't have to work for long. We'll explain when we get to the shop. So I think we just, cause we're running out of daylight. Let's just jump this on the road so we can go and have time to go get our materials and drive back. What do you think? Should we explain what we're gonna do when we get the materials? Yes, we don't need to know now. Yeah. I'm scared for my arm. <laughs> yeah. Not even any new parts. Well, you know, we won't get lucky like this next time. Next time we'll be putting an engine in a fucking Datsun 240Z in Africa or something. In Africa? <laughs> don't oh, don't look at these. This is the same set we've had for every vehicle we've done. Well, they just look good on everything. Yeah, I do. I think smoothies are actually the most versatile, versatile you'd ever get. Just look at that sucker over there. I don't know way. All right, let's hop on the old highway and probably have to grab some fuel somewhere. I'll make sure you don't fall apart somehow. Okay. I'm gonna do a little check and see what we actually got working here and what we don't. So we already figured out the lights work. It does not look like our instrument cluster. Oh, we have something going on. So it must be that marker light's working. Let's see if the wipers work. It's a bad idea most of it. No, it looks like the rubber's good. Usually you don't want to do this because you'll scratch your window. All the dude, the vacuum works to it. No way. Air, I don't. That's just for the vent, for the floor, into your lights. No. Lighter, I don't want to test that just in case. I don't know. We didn't even pull the choke. Well, maybe. And that is freed up. That is crazy. Most of the time, those are all stuck. Last thing, radio check, nothing. Super cool radio though. Shout out, stars and stripes. Clock, it's not six o'clock and it's not moving. Plus we got horn. Oh my gosh, that works. Oh damn, horn works. All right, well, here we go. First time, oh, clutch might need a little adjustment, I think. Here we go. Clutch is adjusting. Throttle is really crispy, so we need to get moving. That two and a half gallons of gas will go quick. I don't want these good for a gas mileage. What if it's a Prius? All right, we are going to be on our way now. Goodbye to your resting place, little fella. Jubilee. If these gauges are working, looks like we have some charge. Looks like if that oil pressure gauge, that's crazy. There's no way that's working. Temperature gauge is looking good. Fuel gauge, those never work. So I want to guess we're probably about empty. See what she does on the highway. kept so much better care of these old vehicles than anybody nowadays and I will totally agree my generation is the worst at it but this is incredible and this is an incredible vehicle for a 53 to be we're on the highway going well 45 and we get up to the road 55 here we are 
12th grade. So she's a little unhappier. I mean, we're still keeping up with the speed limit, but having a little issues. Um, I think she's just getting some of that old gas wrapped up in the old carburetor or something because we're kind of doing a little bit of jolt back and forth once in a while. It could just be draw, blowing the old you know, cobwebs out of her, so that could be the reasoning there. So I'm not going to worry just yet, but should be getting to a gas station here soon. The door water jackets are leaking. This whole top's kind of wet, so probably want to address that before we do anything strenuous. But uh, we'll also figure that out as we go. And I might also just be some residual moisture from that drip in there, which you may be coming up. Oh gosh, there's a cop, I'm, I'm so screwed. That's my truck, so let's just pray that he doesn't get out of the way. There's a cop right there. Oh, she pulls really bad to the right on the brakes. Didn't say that yet, but we're good. Ah. Cop is, uh, is behind Alex. So uh, we might make it. We're in the hometown, so. I straight up thought that cop was gonna turn around, around and, yeah. and give her the bean, uh, give me the beans. Dude, she did phenomenal. I mean, after we made that first gas station stop, started right back up, and right back on the road. So 50 miles easy on the old girl. Um, the, the old boy that had it really took care of it. And I think that really shows with uh, our little drive right there. So we are gonna get ready to, uh, we're gonna go get some items really quick before it gets dark. And then uh, even after dark, we might have to do some of the work out here, not to kind of give it away yet, but we'll have to do a little bit of stuff outside and then we can roll it in the strop and start doing our, uh, our special stuff we wanna show you guys. So you'll see us here in a couple seconds. We'll tell you what we're gonna do and then I'll be it. This is gonna be a weird place for two guys looking all dirty like hey. <laughs> fabric store. What are we looking for? Where am I? Huh? Like Bridal. La Lasse. Oh, this is really good. I'm thinking we're gonna need something like this though, because it actually has home improvement oh. store, baby. He's itchy. Double, please. Actually sounds really good. It sounds really nice. God. I wonder what's under this thing. <laughs> I've had some glass packs, but squeaky. Try to see until see what we had bought for uh, this thing's makeover. So the main thing we are doing to this vehicle is we have these fellas. You all know what that is. This is a three and a half inch uh, flooring block. That's about as extreme as you can get. Um, for uh, basically a stock vehicle without doing anything crazy with the um, drive shaft angle. Then we've got these fellas. Okay? And this right here is something I did a little bit of research on before, uh, you know, before we wouldn't pick the vehicle up. So we had them. These are Aerostar Van Springs. Now, if you listen to everybody online, these fit this vehicle and it lowers it about, I think it was like a, the consensus was about two inches. I wish it went about two and a half so we'd match the back, but we're gonna have a little bit of a rake, which is kind of fine, just in case we drag some oil pan. Worst case scenario, we have to go out to the shop and heat this up and we have to uh, gear a little bit further down. Now I've also read if you do that, then your lower control arm starts to hit your frame. You don't want that either. Lowering it. That's our first piece of the puzzle tonight since we got back a little late. I'm gonna tackle the front end. Alex is gonna tackle the rear end. The next thing in our process tomorrow 
will be to make a lace top. This is something I've always seen, and even when I was a young guy, I've seen at car shows and I always thought it was really cool how they would do lace like paint schemes on the roof. And we uh, we have the perfect vehicle to do it in all honesty. We're not gonna do anything extreme. We're just gonna do a kind of a ghost lace is what I'll call it. And uh, it, will, it will transform this car majorly. I'll tell you what. So after that, we are going to fake patina this. Now fake patina, I mean, we are going to uh, go on these rails and we're gonna sand anything that we think the sun would have hit and turned into a patina look. That's what we're gonna, we're gonna kinda go for something like that. We'll extend this a little bit wider um, and experiment as we go. But this is gonna be somewhat of a learning experience for not only us, but we're also gonna show you what not to do and what to do. So this will give us a very good uh, chance to learn. Um, it will give you a very good chance to what you might not wanna know and what you do wanna know. After that, um, obviously we're all gonna have some exposed areas. We did pick up Obviously, this, you can see we did pick we're up a this fan. gentleman's uh, um, clear coat, and uh, we would like to uh, try it out. And then we're going to clear coat this whole vehicle. We're not going to spray it. We're going to try wiping it off. After that, we'll step into the interior, and we'll get the carpet in it, and maybe we'll even go pick up some, some beauty pieces for maybe some door panels and this guy. Did you say right here. Mexican blanket? Is Mexican that what it's blankets. actually called? Yeah, that's okay. what it's called. Or drug rugs. We can try a different thing. So here's plenty of options there. We'll do that. Something that I really wanted to do that we're gonna do later on with this vehicle is do a flamethrower. So here's a, just fits the vibe. Something that I've always seen at car shows, specifically one car show we go to, guys put big old flamethrowers on the back of these cars. So you rev up the car, boom, 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 and it'll just bullet belch a big old flame out the back. That won't help uh, probably happen this episode. <laughs> and maybe we can participate next year. We will participate in that. We'll participate in a bunch of different things come May. That is my full goal. Um, and we'll have a very large event. We'd like to- Let them know what it's to, called. It's called Torque Fest, Vintage Torque Fest in Dubuque, Iowa. Um, if you guys see this video, this gets a lot of views. It'd be awesome. Um, you can see us probably at that event and uh, you can come support us and or not support us if we have things uh, go downhill again this will be there as long as that little flathead keeps on running as good as she does and uh, you'll get to see what we turned out with all right guys i wanted to do really quick um, a measurement to see how tall both the front and rear are before we start doing these modifications just to see if we actually end up making this uh, better or worse or somewhere in between all right right there we got 25 and a quarter all right looking like directly behind 16.78. Okay, so here's what we got going on. Alex is unpackaging, we're on jack stands, we're looking good. We have uncovered some interesting things as of yet. So I didn't know this and I did not look at the motor in the front, but right now we've uncovered that. We have a fuel pressure regulator, some kind of fuel pump we're looking at. And then uh, obviously a filter. A filter's not a big deal. That tank looks to be original, guys. Like very, like that is definitely the original tank. Um, we still have the original undercoating that's flaking off. But in reality, this car is extremely solid for what it is. And then this back here, she still does have the OG brake lines, but she does have new shocks. And then you see that shiny pipe up in there? That is the new exhaust with the glass pack. So that is very good news. That's exactly probably what we would end up doing with the exhaust. Next thing being is uh, these uh, these rotors are a little rough, but <laughs> you need drums? yeah. Drums? From here on out, oh I'm gonna God, so I'm gonna continuously call these rotors because it just makes everybody so infuriated. Last video called them uh, rotors once in the first two seconds of the video, and we got called mediocre because we are. We have brand new rubber brake lines in the front here. One of 17, so that's fantastic. And then we have a new uh, steel line there. And then if you look down here, we have a gas leak. So we have some kind of a fuel leak coming from that crevasse right there. So we might be doing a little bit of fuel sourcing there and maybe changing to a rubber fuel line coming from the tank. I don't know, we'll see what's going on. It's, uh, it's, it's been peeing pretty good. Front lowering springs wise, I think all I'm gonna have to do is this pivot shaft, it looks like. Looks like I should. All I need to do is undo this monstrous bolt, bring that out, and then the lower control arm drops the everything down. So we're gonna pray that I can drop it down far enough 
where I don't need to take the brake line off, but if we do, it's uh, not the end of the world. There's probably a better way to do this. Also, you can take the bottom knuckle loose from the lower control arm. The next thing you're gonna see me talk about is telling you to take the top bolt off the upper control arm. Don't do that. You live and learn, you know? You're young and you don't know what you're doing. And then you know what you're doing after you duck it up. And now, we're gonna do the wrong thing and see if we get the spring and kill one of us. It's like, you know, it's a game. I got this knuckle down. Looks like we just unthread the top knuckle and uh, it basically unthreads out of that upper control arm, which is, or upper A arm, which is fantastic. The only bad part about this whole process is I had to end up pulling that brake line. Should be fine. It's got a whole new rebuild kit in it, which it looks like, so should bleed just fine and come back to life just as fine. So just look how clean this guy is under a little bit of rot right there. But other than that, a lot of the original undercoating is still underneath this vehicle. For an Iowa car, this is insane. All right, for you folks that are doing the back, it's a lot more easier than the front. All you have to do is take this bottom plate out, boop, and then put the new U-bolts in there and jack the pumpkin up and then slide the, the spacer right in between there and you're done. And if you're doing the front like Sean, you have to do all this. Except you get hazard pay. All right, guys. So we were having some phenomenal luck and a lot of quick progress. As you'll see, we have three tires over. We got hit in the face. And guys are basically saying that <laughs> to get rims and tires on these after you lower it up to at three and a half inches, two inches, two and a half inches is an issue. But since we're at three and a half, you have to basically uninstall lowering blocks and then reinstall them with a tire on the axle. <laughs> so we are getting ready to see which of our three will work. We obviously want the Mickey to work because um, that's the look we're going for, but it's going to be a very, very close fit. And uh, I don't really want to massage these. Some gentlemen said that you basically have to massage these as well or roll them. Again, we don't want to do that. Alex and I are both are hoping that the black ones don't work and we have to paint their OGs. But uh, if the black ones do work, we are going to use our beautiful black um, steelies just because it fits the look of the car. And then we have to buy new rims and tires for not only the Javi, but also the Coyote wagon. So this is a universal kit, so we had to get a 7 8 drill bit and drill out the bottom just a little bit more. So now she'll work. Yeah, I got my side in. She doesn't have a lot of material left, but I think this is strong enough aluminum and this engine doesn't have enough power um, to really make a difference. The other thing is, is that we wish this was the same 7 8 as that. Um, we're going to play devil's advocate and uh, see... Uh, what happens if we uh, obviously don't do this right and uh, make it so this is the same size down here. So uh, again, at home don't, really, you know, I recommend taking your time either making a bushing, but we're uh, we're pretty late at night right now. We want to get her done and uh, it shouldn't be an issue, like I said, with how much little amount of power this vehicle has compared. If you're, you got 500 horse, don't do this. But 186 horse, shouldn't make a difference. Oh, there it goes. All right, sweet. Here we go. Okay. So the worst possible situation transpired, which is also the best. Okay, we're saying basically our pocketbooks hurt. Keep going up. Keep going up. 
up more can. But wait, wait a second. Hold up, buttercup. Okay, down you go. And then over. Alright, down. They actually. <laughs> How tucked is that? Oh. Does it look phenomenal though? Oh, when oh it, it looks when really it's good. Down. Oh my god. Holy cow. Why does it look so good? Cool, actually. 275s. On a 53 Ford. <laughs> For no reason. For no reason. And all he can tell us how to hop this little guy up. I also want to know what kind of rear end this is, because it looks like a, very much like a, an early 9 inch. I know it's not, but gosh, it looks very... Might be an 8 inch? Comments tell me, because I'll look it up by the time you tell me, but... An update of the ages. 275s, 53, Ford, three and a half inch lower. Yes, they fit. That means I need to buy new rims and tires. He's fine, don't listen to him. <laughs> I bought these for the wagon, long story short, and we have used the you know what out of them. We've used them for a lot of projects, haven't we? Oh yeah, we have. So and they look good on everything because smoothies look so good. Yeah, this is a little known fact. If you guys don't agree, smoothies look good on everything. Um, you're automatically wrong and you need to leave this channel. So, <laughs> please, <stay. laughs> please actually like, comment, subscribe, uh, PM us on what vehicle you want to buy because everything's for sale always. Now I am getting ready to reinstall the front suspension and brake lines. Again, just unleash the bottom. Please don't, don't have to re-bleed all your brakes. Like we're going to have to. We probably won't bleed them tonight. Uh, we're just gonna set back down on the ground and then we'll make it really hard on ourselves so we have to jack back up and take the tire off to bleed it again. But that's just what we do. So worst possible situation that'll happen now is that our matching fronts will hit this inside fender right here. And then uh, that'll be a really depressing moment and oh, you did the back for nothing. Oh my gosh, dude. You should see this. This is how it's gonna look. Oh my gosh, this is so low. Okay, hold it right there. Oh, dude, it's good. It is so good. Oh my gosh. You know, honestly guys, I am not usually an excited person, being totally honest, but this car is gonna look insane. No way is it that low in the back. Oh, oh. Oh, she's tucked. <laughs> Dude. Oh my God. I'll be honest with you. This thing looks amazing. That's so low. Oh, that's a lot better too. Dude, the Arrow Star Springs killed it. Are we on the bump stops in the front? <laughs> Are we on the bump stops everywhere? No, dude, we have... <laughs> We have literally an inch of room. That's perfect. We are basically five hours after picking this vehicle up and this is, this looks so good. It'll probably ride like butt and it'll probably not be functional at all, but it's totally worth it. Oh, it's just so much better. Everything about this vehicle. I'd take it for a drive right now, but I'm an idiot. And there is still, Probably a half an inch of clearance. This needs a coyote yesterday. I'm just kidding. You know, I looked one of these up on the internet when we first got it. I was a little bit disappointed it wasn't a business coupe. This might be the best example of a two-door sedan I've seen. And that's, we're not even, this is just the first step. Can you imagine if this thing was actually where we wanted it? And it'll be there tomorrow. It'll be there tomorrow, as close as we can get her. Of course, we will have one more thing, and that might be the tin on the windows. Yeah, I'm I'm a tint guy, and I think with the black accents that we're doing, just tinting out the just like yeah, just a little street. bit, yeah. Just give it a little haze to it, and it'll match so good. No, we're not gonna get rid of the chrome, guys. This one, all the chrome stain. But I will say, we are, I think, going to get this guy black, and the bullet black, and then do these titches black. I'm thinking we're gonna try it, and I think that will be our connection to our lace. Yeah, to the. And roof. I think this thing is gonna be way too sexy. Oh no, you know what? Oh, it's gonna ride great. It's probably gonna ride the exact same. Yeah, it's not too stiff. I mean, the front's a little stiffer, but it needed that. Yeah, the Aero Star Springs will break in. 
And what I read is those will actually get lower yet. So yeah. once those Oh well, yeah, they need to be broken. Half an inch, two yeah. inch. Wow. Well, we didn't even check. <laughs> Let's not do this on camera. This is a good night. We will see you guys in the morning. All right, guys. Good morning. Showed up pretty early this morning and uh and started staying on the roof. And uh, she's uh she's pretty rough on the roof wise. I was really hoping to get by with not doing this extensive work, but uh, obviously it's needed so before we do anything extreme on top. So we're taking care of it now rather than later. So we're gonna go ahead and finish sanding this. I've got the heater cooking so we can get all of the moisture out of this car because um, this metal is gonna have some moisture in it since it's been below freezing and everything for a while. So we're gonna hold the garage at a steady 50, 60 degrees for a couple hours, get that, uh, get the wetness out of it and then we will be ready to clear coat the old girl only thing I'm worried about is that heater over there takes a lot of juice so we'll pray that that tank does not run out in the time frame that we needed to um, stay warm I'm gonna go ahead and finish some of the sanding on this and he's gonna go back with some Dynaglass and Dynaglass it and we'll hope that Dynaglass uh, dries in a timely manner in that time frame, we'll probably start sanding to make this thing patinaed. We'll get this uh, wrapped up. That way we can continue on our original plan and we can stay on our time, time budgeting. But still, look how good this thing looks. Everybody's gonna be so mad at us. All right, so we're using the sunny side mineral spirits. Sean's masking off. It's gonna be faster than newspaper boy over there. Going around and oh God. as you can see, it's super shiny over there. But put this stuff on and bam. The shine comes out. It'll look even better with that clear coat on. Oh, all right guys, so we are uh, masked off, ready to start our special roof. Um, solely very excited about this because it's gonna be absolutely sweet. It's gonna be a great addition to the car, especially the way it's looking right now with the stance. So right now we're gonna, I think we're gonna wash this down. We're gonna shoot a little bit of primer where we have bare metal and then we are gonna go eat lunch and then we'll be back to uh, do the lace lace up that put on uh, spraying with a gun or anything so this is a lace paint job for under 30 bucks <laughs> Rattle can restoration. Rattle can restoration. Let me tell you what. <laughs> oh, God. Dude, that thing looks magical already. Yes, sir. Not bad for restoration. The boomers are going crazy. They're so pissed right now. Yeah. Toxic wonderland here, but I'll tell you. 
you what, I don't know if we ever laid down a better WrestleMania paint job in our lives. It's pretty solid. So, we're going to let this here 110%, and then we need to go back with our uh, lace laid over the top, pull it as tight as humanly possible after this is dry, and spray the flat over it, and then we'll have our Right now, I'm going to grab some of this triple zero, a box of rags, and some Windex, and I am going to start working on this chrome in the front here. While I'm doing that, Alex is going to start around back on that back bumper, and uh, I think we can get this chrome looking really nice. Um, we already did tape off these tail lights, but we'll probably untape them really quick just because we're waiting for this guy to dry, and we're not really going to kick up much dust. So. We'll uh, give you guys the final product. Again, triple zero or quad zero steer wall, whatever you want to use. The triple zero might etch it a little bit, but the quad will do a good job. And some uh, Windex. Went through all of it with the old quad zero. Look at that shine. Original 1953 chrome coming back really nice. Got a couple bits and stuff, but not terrible. We are still in talks on if we want to point, uh, paint the bullet or not. I'm gonna paint the little lashes when uh, somebody gets back with some paint. So I'm gonna thread those or paint those in. I don't know. We've got uh, we've got the boomer that doesn't want to do it, and uh, both of us want to do it just to see. You know, it'd be I don't know. I think it'd be kind of cool to match the roof well, to the this bullet. Video is for the boomers to hate. This is this is to make a 1950s, let's say, uh, grandpa car into something that some uh, guys that want to get into cars that will keep the car hobby going look good. That's our whole goal is to make this appealing to millennials and Gen Z so that maybe they would see this and be like, wow, that's actually a really cool car rather than looking at takeover. About 20 degrees outside. We got that sucker cooking. But no matter what we do, you're still gonna be a whole humidity in the air. So this is gonna take a little bit longer than the two hours it says to dry and I don't want we're gonna mask off like the drip tray and then the lace will go behind it basically so I don't want to mask it and then pull it tight after that two hour roll and then rip all of what we did off we are just gonna go expensive route and time extensive route and rip all this off and then mask off the chrome clean the car one more time and we're gonna do the the BGG clear coat tonight, which is good for you guys because you can see a really good transformation. Um, and then we can also see a really good transformation. Enjoy us unwrapping a car. All right, so we are about probably about five minutes away from Lane starting to lay that clear coat. Right now, we're just waiting for some of our uh, mineral spirits to dry. We will start in the back here, work our way forward because we have one more spot that's being uh, sanded on that we'll have to clean up with mineral spirits intact. Right now, Alex is going around tack clothing it, so that way in the clear coat we don't have a bunch of uh, bulges. Obviously, if this is uh, if you guys ever see this car in person. It is not the mirror perfection. We still have some uh, holes and rust holes and stuff that, uh, like see that right there behind, under that door? Yeah, she ain't perfect. It is never meant to be perfect. It is meant to be a driver. I'm not gonna pull us down to ground zero and do all of the body work just because of some random minor spots because then it just sits on jack stands for 30 years and never gets done. So we're just getting her ready. Best thing I can tell you guys is do the same thing. If you think you need a show car, you don't need a show car. Prep. Do a lot of prep. Um, Alex is going to take a cup and I'm going to take a cup. So I want to have two separates. So I'm going to actually start with four cups, divide this in half, divide that in half so I know exactly how much we have, and then kind of go from there. I'm going to mix them up. We'll do some blah, blah, blah. What's this first stuff? So this is going to be your activator, is my understanding. And then uh, um, that's going to be your actual, your goods. That's your actual clear coat. So this is a part kind of thing. They uh, didn't have on any instruction sheet what part it was, just mostly because you're supposed to put that full thing. And this full thing, we are just gonna divide it. We are going to 
divide it again. Okay, right now we're on the two to one line for both of these on the first little one. One, I grab two more. The cleaner you are, the better your stuff looks. Just so you know, that's why we look like chicken nuggets. We're gonna get these both lined up in the two to ones again. A little over five on that. Over five on that. Yeah, obviously, if I was a painter, I'd know all these equations, but. Now you need to get a mix of that. Mix it all up. All right guys, here she is. After the VGG wipe on clear coat. I'm gonna give you guys my honest opinion. Um, I really wish we would have sprayed this. Um, just would have done the car a lot better, if I'm being honest with you. Um, you definitely see all the, really doesn't pick up on camera. That's why it looks so good in all the videos. You can see every wipe mark on the damn thing. And that might be because we Applicated a little bit different or wrong, but uh, being honest with you, so this is almost dry. It's been about 45 minutes since we uh, put it on. Basically, very it's nice and thick. So I'm thinking if we really wanted to, we could take a, a wet sand to it and then go ahead and hit it with the buffer. I think we could get a really good sheen out of it then. But uh, in all honesty, I think as of right now, I think this is as good as we're going to get which is uh, significantly better than what it did look like. I love the patina. It looks, just looks so much cooler. Gives uh, the paint some character, gives the car character. Everything just has more character on their old girl now. There she is for the night. She's gonna sit like that. We're gonna do the lace top and we got a couple of little knickknacks to make her cool again. And then that is it. I took off this, uh, well, I'd call it like the trunk panel or whatever you wanna call it, divider panel. And I was doing some thinking. This thing, the seat covers are, are actually pretty uh, pretty cool with the nice red and uh, some stuff going on there. And obviously we have that nice carpet kit right here to still put in there and it's kind of bland. So we got, we got a little weird going on, a little bland going on. And then we got these doors. Those are pretty rough. Um, we got a lot of popping and blowing out here. So usually what I do is I go and grab some masonite and we just wrap it in some black vinyl, but I had. <laughs> so since this was uh, an older gentleman's vehicle, I had this idea. Let's do some flannel accenting in her. Now, I think that this is gonna give it a really different look, and that's what we're kind of going for. I started having little like reminiscing moments about like the gremlins on, I guess, Levi editions, and even Jeeps with, uh, with their uh, flannel. So we are gonna at least do this back panel and then the two side doors. So I'm gonna get a bench cleared off so we can start going, but I'm just gonna give you an overview how this is all gonna go. So in, in a perfect world, what I would do is I would go get a piece of masonite, template that, and then basically just use that. Um, but this is not gonna be a perfect world because I kind of want to try to reuse what I can. And uh, this guy I think is fully reusable. It's got a little bit of water damage, nothing too crazy, but I'd still, still would like to just rewrap this guy and uh, just throw that, this flannel right over the top. There's no reason we can't do that because it's our hot rod. So we're just gonna throw this circumstance. This is solid enough to still use to rewrap. I am not an interior specialist by any means of the word, so. You can go ahead and judge all the hell you want. I don't really care. But these guys, I'm definitely gonna have to go pick up a four by eight sheet of masonite, probably eighth inch. And we will probably have to go to town on gluing and rewrapping. This little pad here, I am missing on that side. So I might pick up something too that I can kind of mold. And I'm gonna wrap that sucker in the, the plaid or flannel as well. Later on, I would really like to pull these, uh, these are all metal panels that come off. I like to pull all that and start converting this interior to black just because brown is kind of meh, but it would also, it's gonna match our flannel pretty well. So I know a lot of you guys are gonna be like wondering how to get these off 
in a very quick manner. These, uh, they're just a clip. Our local hardware store, O'Reilly's Auto Parts, as we'll say it, they didn't have the right tool for the job. So I ended up kind of pushing it in with a straight screwdriver and then just used like a dental pick and grabbed the, the heavy part of the clip and popped it out. It still took a significant amount of time to do so. So yours really doesn't seem like it's a very fast way to do this. You know, there's always tricks to the trade. Let me know in the comments section, how do you get these Ford clips out really fast? We're gonna take this window molding out. I already did the other side. All right guys, be honest with you. It's been a couple days. Took me a couple days to go get the mace tonight. Been a busy couple days for uh, before the holidays here. So here's what we got going on. We got the lace rolled out. It is, uh, it's vibing. So it just uh, kind of straightens out a little bit since it was in a roll. Um, went and got a little bit more heat juice, propane, so we can get this lit up and get the car back up to temperature so that way we can do our lace top. Next thing being, I've got my table laid out outside because it's a pretty, it's a little brisk today, but not too terrible. Um, I'm getting ready to trace these uh, door panels, the old ones, on uh, a piece of masonite, and then I will start cutting these out with, uh, with my jigsaw and we'll get these uh, ready to uh, basically rewrap on a new panel. The only problem with doing this is if you had a lot more time, you could glue those little fellers in. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna go ahead and use some self tappers around the door. Um, that's usually what I see a lot of people do anyway. So we're gonna follow that route. And then I did make an executive decision just cause these are pretty rotted if I'm being honest with you guys. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, make a new one of these as well probably make it a little bit smaller so it fits in a little easier then I'm still up in the air about doing these back door panels as of right now because I think I'm gonna run out of fabric but I'll keep you guys updated okay guys so here's what I use to kind of do these door panels um, you can get these handy panels of eighth inch, basically anywhere you want. So it's uh, I, they say you can get uh, the cardboard uh, eighth inch from online for uh, upholstery, but I just go ahead and go to the local big box store, grab one of those up. Then I just lay it on top like you guys saw, trace them out, make your own, grab your uh, jigsaw, grab your little skill saw, and then grab your DA. Um, I grab 36 grit to clean up my edges, and then I grab a spade bit. And cut out the holes so this is about as um, budget as you can get this panel is 19 bucks the fabric was 40 bucks so we're gonna do these door panels basically for uh, 60 dollars um, as well as that back panel now obviously if you get uh, actual automotive grade fabric and actual automotive grade everything we're gonna be up into the two 300 400 bucks and if you get these mount multi pattern you know you can get as expensive as you want but right here we have 60 bucks sitting here and uh, um, it's always a good day when you can work outside in December. So this is about as much as you can get. Out, saw horses, piece of plywood, just having a good time. Um, here's what I got left from the handy panel 4x8 sheet. Um, that might be enough to make one rear door panel. Again, we're gonna see how much we got left. I'm gonna blow off my table, lay out my fabric and start laying these on the faces. Um, and then I'm gonna we'll see how much we actually have left. And uh, you guys are gonna watch me hit it scissors I have a drywall knife um, you guys could use a roller as well but you know whatever and then grab some automotive grade headliner adhesive which will work fantastic spread your fabric out make sure you don't have any wrinkles make sure you're pretty straight the nice part about we're doing this on some OSB so it has it's kind of prickly so it keeps it pretty uh, actually straight then you're gonna grab your panel obviously this is gonna be the top so what we're gonna end up doing is spray that automotive adhesive, adhesive all over this, pretty thick little layer. And then we're gonna just slam it right down and we're gonna cut it out after it adheres pretty nicely. Now it is, like I said, about 50 degrees out here. So uh, it's gonna take a minute to adhere, but once it adheres, we will cut about approximately two inches in the border and then we'll be, we'll be green light.
Okay, as you guys saw, basically what you need to do is uh, just overlay it, spray it, overlay it, boom. You basically got it, cut it out, and then now we're gonna get to the kind of the harder part where you uh, fold this whole thing over and start getting your butt kicked by it a little bit. But I think it shouldn't be too terrible. This stuff is uh, better adhesive than it was. Okay, I'm gonna step you guys through this real quick. Basically how I do this, whether it be the right way or wrong way, I go through the corners and make a couple relief cuts. Make sure you don't go into the corner, obviously. I just go through, relief cut, a couple spots even on the straight areas. Relief cut, relief cut, then relief cut. Again, this is not automotive grade fabric, but we're making it automotive grade right now. How come when you film, even a dirt road is insanely busy? Relief cut central. Basically what you can do is, you, what I kind of noticed is that since this stuff is uh, has a little bit more give to it, I was just spraying it, you know, just, just send her on, you know? Just... Oh. Then I was taking my little knife, flip it over, flip it over, flip it over, flip it over, and then you can kind of, you can even shape it with this knife as you go through. The knife grabs it and flips it over itself. A couple spots you might have to grab and bring in tight, tight. So that way you don't have any weird edges. Not that this corner you won't see because it has a little steel panel on it, but you never know what you're gonna see. You go around with it one more time and uh, spray it with a little bit more adhesive and then hit it with tape. We do not have any uh, Gorilla Tape, so we're using Painter's Tape, which isn't gonna do much holding power, but it will work. Basically, that's your process on all of your door panels. It's gonna be the same thing with that one. And then one's inside curing right now, so that way we can install it later today. But pretty simple process. Pretty much anybody can do it. And like I said, this is $60 basically in material. We are retaping the car off one more time. So that way we can go ahead and spray our lace. Alex is inevitably sick, just like I was last week. So we're gonna we're gonna finish this old girl up without him. So the video quality is gonna go down, but you'll have that. All we got left is this roof. I gotta bleed the front brakes, and then I think uh, well, obviously install the door panels we made. Then she's ready for her new and improved maiden voyage. Okay, after all hands on deck. We are kind of ready. What we're gonna try is use these little ma uh, magnets that we bought that was uh, not toys, is what it said on the packaging, so don't ingest these. But we are gonna seam it right there, continue it right there, and then it's a seam on the other side, it's the same. So I think it's gonna look pretty sweet. She's putting clothespins in that seam right now so it stays uh, the same. I, uh, I don't know if I'm excited or scared for this end result. I think it'll look decent as long as everything goes right. I'm, I'm afraid. Oh wow, in pictures it looks really good. All right, here she is. Oh wow, camera picks up real nice. There you go, boys and girls. She is now, I don't even know what you'd say, a 60s custom? I don't even know what you'd call this. This is our custom. We're gonna call it the 
daily driven death traps custom so there's our breakage line there our breakage line over here is a little bit lower but you can't look at two sides of the car at once so um long story short turned out okay i think uh if we would have done a little bit thicker of a lace it would have turned out a little bit better it kind of ghosts off which is cool so i i think uh for a couple spray cans I think this is pretty solid. She's a little streaky as well, but I don't think I mind it. For the price, this top, I think we have like $36 into it. So for 36 bucks, lace top, custom, you guys can look them up online. There's guys that are using, you know, $500 spray guns and get about the exact same uh, quality, but the longevity on there is probably gonna be a little bit better. But this is really good for what it is. And I love the shine still, even though it has the flat to it. Looks really good. So we've got the rubberized flooring out, which is actually in really good shape for its year. So uncovering that, we've got some uh, some patches transpired at one point in this old girl's life. And we've even got some food from the last uh, mouse. So that's perfect. What we're gonna do now is just vacuum it up and I'm just gonna spray bomb it, being honest with you guys. And after that, we'll throw the new carpet down and cut the hole for the vroom vroomer and uh, then there will be that will be that for uh, this time around we're going to be left with still doing those rear door panels later in life and as well as painting a couple other little things i think for uh gosh we only have about six maybe seven hours into this transformation so far so i think it's been uh, it's looking good so far so i'm gonna vacuum and i'll get right back with you all right boys and girls here's what we're working with We've got the new front carpet, new back carpet. Big fan of whoever, uh, who purchased this carpet before, uh, you know, because it uh, it came with these nice little metal uh, round eyelets for uh, the throttle and the kick, the high low beam, which line up great, help you line up the carpet. Then it came with these extra um, sound deadeners, and then I even put a little bit of. Uh, uh, sound deadener down in the center so that way under the seat we won't have as much uh, noise but uh, other than that this car is turning out much better than ever expected so be almost to I'd almost say it's the quality of a car show car which I don't own this is kind of odd for me so we're gonna throw seat back in it cover up all the beauty we just uh, beholded then I'm gonna get to installing the door cards in the back panel all right here we are we got her back on the road. We're about a couple days later, and uh, this is its first test drive out and about. I will say, she does rub a little bit in the back, so we might need to do some fender rolling or uh, something of the sorts. Nothing too major. Uh, we'll just hope we don't cut the sidewall of our little Mickey Dompy. So, other than that, she uh, is tracking really straight, especially after uh, me taking those upper control arms uh, loose and messing with their adjustments um, as well as we also fix when you push the brakes how it turns to the right the only thing we did kind of mess up is the throttle just due to the fact there's like this little ball and uh, it needs to be adjusted upwards so that we can actually go throttle down right now we're only about a half throttle no matter what we do this is just a cruiser such a nice car inside now actually that looks phenomenal on everything looks so good on camera so the only thing we gotta do next is get this car the rest uh, matching. So we gotta get these back door panels done and get this dash black and everything else kind of matching. And I'm, my goodness, this thing will be a regular rig. Here we are behind the scenes of B-roll. <laughs> Let's talk about 
the transformation this 53 Ford Custom line went through in the last, let's say, 12 hours of work. Okay, so we started off with getting this vehicle from its original resting place, like its original home, and basically had no trouble getting this sucker running and driving in, uh, in basically two hours. We drove it home, she drove like a dream, so you know what, in, the, in that thought process, we were like, you know what, we need to modernize this, we need to make this look like something we would wanna drive, slash a newer generation would look at it and being like, wow, that is a really sweet rig. So we took a couple cues, and all the cues were super budget friendly. The first cue was we had to lower this car. So we went on the internet, I did a little bit of research, we found that Aerostar front springs actually work to lower these vehicles two and a half inches. So we did not only that, but we also lowered the back three and a half inches. And not only that, we put a nice set of deep dish 275 17s as well as some 255 17s in the front. Give it those little moon caps to give it a little finish. That black just sets off the car. After we saw the black rims, we thought about it a little bit and we decided to do something special at the top. Now this is something I've seen for years and always wanted to do, but never had the vehicle or the opportunity to do it. So we decided to do a black lace top. So as you'll see on the top, it actually turned out significantly better than expected. That top cost us $65. No joke. Rust-Oleum gloss, Rust-Oleum flat, and then the fabric to overlay. The fabric was actually more expensive than the paint itself. After that, we decided, you know what, we need to bring this thing's natural touch out because it was the paint job was pretty boring and pretty lackluster, if you ask me. It did have a nice gold to it. A lot of people left it the way it was. But me personally, Alex, this does not fit our, that did not fit what we like. So we decided to fake some patina. And we did, I think we went a little extreme, but I think we did the perfect amount to offset the vehicle tremendously. We then went ahead after the patina, we took one of our, one of our uh, YouTube friends or YouTube uh, person's uh, advice and we did a nice clear coat on it. That's that Vice Grip Garage wipe on gloss. Now we didn't have the best, uh, didn't have the best result, but I, in all honesty, we had a result I am more than happy with. So after we had a nice glossy finish, we went, went ahead and went through all the chrome with some SOS and uh, some steel wool with some Windex and the chrome looks immaculate. Now this vehicle was never meant to be perfect, but for very, very small amounts of money, we have turned this thing into an extremely budget hot rod build. We have less than, I think, 1800 bucks into. The wheels and tires make up most of that. This is the most budget friendly thing you are ever gonna do. Get your buddy, Get whoever wants to help you. Go find a rig that's at least in somewhat decent shape. Overpay a little bit, and then just do your cosmetic stuff. I'm not a guy that likes cosmetic stuff, but this car has turned out leaps and bounds better than we ever expected. Now, something that I'd really like to show you guys is the interior. This is something that I came up with myself, walking around Joanne's Fabric, where no men are meant to be. But we went in there and decided to give this car a crazy touch. And that's a flannel interior. So the seat covers and the rear seat covers were actually already there. So we needed to offset those a little bit. And we also needed to bring some touch to it. So we decided to hit this thing with a little bit of a vibe from an AMC, as well as I think a Jeep with some flannel to it. So we got some flannel on the back, we got some flannel on the door cards. We're also gonna do in the future flannel on the rear door cards. And we also have brand new carpet sitting inside the sucker. Now, as you'll see, I think for, uh, for the budget we had, this vehicle has turned out amazingly. Not only did we revive this vehicle, but we also brought it a whole new life. And that's, 
really all you can ask for on these old rigs. And I think this is gonna be our first success story on our channel that runs and drives on its own power after we did a bunch of work to it. So we are not done yet. We still have a 12 volt conversion with the vehicle. And we also have a couple other little minor touches to make this an extremely user friendly and fun vehicle to drive anywhere you want. But this really is a daily driver that we could all get behind. From trash, not really trash, from lackluster to as much luster as you can ask for in 12 hours, this is what we can give you.